Oh, hi folks, it's Bob from Mountain Crest Farms. Beautiful day today. Gonna be hot, a little bit of poofy clouds, not much. You know, you know, clear blue sky is not a pretty sky to me. I like looking up and seeing poofy clouds. And we got poofy clouds today. Enough to make for a pretty sky and not enough to keep it cool. It's still gonna be a blistering hot day. Oh me. Hope yesterday's video wasn't too much of a downer. Uh, I do all I can to keep politics out of this. But after what happened last weekend, there was just no way I had to do yesterday's video. So if it bothered you, I apologize. I hope you don't leave my channel. If, it, if you agreed with it, go back, watch it again, and leave me a comment. Um... I got hit in the face today with something that I think I've touched on before. I know I've mentioned it before. Um, but I don't think I've really done a deep dive on it. And that's wants versus needs. Um, I got hit in the face with wants versus needs this morning. My wife was laughing at me. And uh, she said, you ought to do a video on that. Well, yeah. And actually, a pretty good topic. Um... Let me back up a little bit before we get into wants versus needs. Let me tell you a little bit of something that we do around here. I like outdoor cooking, okay? Uh, grilling out, smoking bar uh, pork butts for barbecue, smoked brisket, um, smoked meatloaf. I did a video on smoked meatloaf a week or two ago. <coughs> outdoor cooking. I like outdoor cooking. And I see outdoor cooking as part of homesteading, not part of just because a bunch of guys want to get together and drink beer and grill burgers. I see outdoor cooking as part of homesteading. That's what I tell my wife. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. And here's how it's part of homesteading. Um, homesteading is a frugal lifestyle. Not cheap, not deprivation, but frugal. Because to me, homesteading is trying to make a living off of your property. And you can't make a living off of your property if you spend a whole lot of money, unless you were rich to start with. And we all know I'm not rich to start with. But it's part of a frugal lifestyle because outdoor cooking um, reduces the amount of energy you have to use. Indoor cooking is expensive, okay? Uh, but before you even talk about the propane to, or in my case, I've got a, prop a gas stove and oven pro run on propane. And before you talk about the electricity it takes to run your microwave, microwaves consume a tremendous amount of electricity for the work they do. And before you talk about all that, first thing you got to do is crank the air conditioning up. Indoor cooking in the summer makes your house hot. So, your expenses start with air conditioning and go from there. Outdoor cooking, on the other hand, you don't have to heat up your house. You don't have to run your air conditioner as hard. Yeah, you still got fuel costs. Shoot, when I'm smoking pork butt around here for some pulled pork barbecue, I don't have any, I've got very few fuel costs. I use a little bit of charcoal to get everything going and heating up. And that I'm using wood that I cut down here. Sometimes I smoke with maple. I've got maple trees that I've cut down. Sometimes you smoke with hickory. Most people in the south like to smoke with hickory. I've got hickory trees that have had to come down. So I, my fuel costs are nil. My air conditioning costs don't go up because of the hot house. I consider that to be homestead. Like I said, that's the story I told my wife and I'm sticking to it. But today, talking about wants versus needs, I was in Walmart. Well, okay, back up again. Right now, I've got a pretty decent offset smoker that I can also grill on in the firebox if I'm not going to be smoking something. And I've got a pretty good deep fry station. Uh, has three, has a three uh, 
gas, uh, oil or grease pans, uh, each heated separately so you can do a fresh fish fry. And for you people that aren't from the south that have never been to a good old southern fish fry, you have missed it. There is not much better in the afternoon than some fried mullet. Yeah, mullet is the right fish. Some people use catfish. But some fried mullet, some cheese grits. <laughs> yes, cheese grits. Google it. And some coleslaw, and uh, some, well, for the fried, and some uh, corn fritters or hush puppies or whatever you want to call them in your part of the country. Then some coleslaw and a couple of slices of white bread. There have been more churches built using that as a fundraiser in the South. And a lot of small local charities. Uh, fish fries are good and I've got everything you need to do that. What I don't have is a flat top. What I don't have is a griddle. And here we get into wants versus needs. I want a flat top. If I'm honest, I'll probably tell you I don't need it, but my story is I need a flat top. Two things, two more things I want for cooking. One's a flat top, and one is a tool to do what's called sous vide. S O U S V I D E. I'll tell you about that one of these days. But last week I was in Walmart. And there's a company called Blackstone that makes a, they make a 36 and a 48 inch flat top griddle. And they had a 36 inch in there on sale. It was used. Now you don't see used stuff at Walmart very often. But this one was used and it was marked down 50 bucks. Uh, the original price on a Blackstone 36 inch griddle, flat top, whatever you want to call it. Around here, the store down here is $247, and this was marked down to $199. And it was obviously used. You could look at it until it had been used. And the piece of paper with it said also the drip pan was missing, and there were no returns. And I looked at that, and I thought, that's a pretty good price, but that's a good price of putting something new on sale. When you can't return it, when it's missing a part, and when it's obviously used, that's just not enough for you. So I went and I found the store manager. I said, hey, Philip, I want to talk to you about that griddle you've got out there in the Lauren Garden. He said, what about it? I said, I want it. He said, I'll get somebody to help you load it. I said, no, 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 no. I want it, but I'm not paying $199 for it. Y'all's normal price is $247. You've marked it down $50. Bucks. It's used. He said, yeah, we had a cookout for the employees a couple weeks ago, and we used it for that. I said, regardless of how it's used or why it's used, it is a used grill at this point. It's missing a drip pan. He said, you can call the company that makes it, call Blackstone. They'll send you another drip pan. I said, it's not the point. What I'm paying y'all for and what I'm walking out of here with is a used grill without a drip pan. I said, and I've never seen Walmart have anything that you couldn't return it, but it says no returns on there too. He said, yeah, the kind of discount, uh, different codes for different kinds of discounts. I went, yes, I'm scratching because those piss ants are after me again. Dang it. He said, Walmart has different kind of codes for different kind of discounts. A straight up clearance item gets one kind of code and those that can be returned. When it's something the store is used, that gets a different kind of discount, and they don't allow returns. I said, so you're telling me that something that sells new for $247, that I can catch on sale for $219 anytime I want to online, you have marked all the way down to the sum of $199 when it's used, when it's missing a part, and when I can't return it. He said, yep, afraid so. Now, this was last Monday. I said, Philip, I want that flat top, but I am not paying $199 for it. He said, I understand, Bob. I said, but, I said, besides which, that $199, I get another 10% off, right? He said, yeah, clearance items, regular clearance, 
uh, employee discounts don't don't apply, but the discount for store use items like that, yeah, the di employee discount applies. So yes, your wife gets another 10% off. I said, okay, so that makes it better. Still too much. He said, well, the way I've got it set up, I can't mark it down again until Friday. I said, but you can mark it down Friday? He said, yep. I said, okay, Philip, here's the deal. I'm going to call y'all 8 o'clock Friday morning because Lawn and Garden Center doesn't open until 8 o'clock. I said, I'm going to call y'all at 8 o'clock Friday morning. And if that grill is still here, and you'll mark it down to $150 or less, less would be okay with me. I'll give you a credit card number over the phone. I want that flat top. He said, okay, give me a call Friday. Well, 8 o'clock was about 10 minutes ago, maybe 15 minutes ago. And I made that call. And my wife was sitting there. And I got the lawn and garden. A girl I know late named Linda works out there. She answered lawn and garden. I said, hey, Linda. She said, what? I said, this is Bob Hales. I said, you know that Blackstone 36-inch flat top griddle that y'all had on sale because it was used for the store cookout? She said, I sold it two days ago. She said, I sold it two days ago. She said, I sold it two days ago. I said, Linda, how dare you? She laughed. She said, what? I said, I talked to Philip Monday and told him if it was still there on Friday, I'd take it at 150 bucks. How dare you sell that griddle? That was my griddle. She just started laughing. The point of all this is sometimes you have a hard time distinguishing between want and need. Yeah, I've wanted that flat top. And yes, I claimed that I needed that flat top. You know, finish setting up my outdoor kitchen because Outdoor cooking is homesteading and frugal living, or that's the excuse I was using. I needed that flat top. You know, sometimes when we're not smart enough to figure stuff out, God tells us. I think God just told me that, Bob, you wanted that flat top. And you'd have a good use for it. But you didn't need that, nat lat that flat top. But you talked yourself into needing that flat top. So I just sent somebody in there to buy it two days ago. Sometimes we don't smart enough to figure out the difference between our wants and our needs. So God looks out after us. God always looks out after us. It, you know, every, all of us have heard the old story about the walking on the beach. And there were two sets of footprints. And uh, one set was the perfect view. And the other set was Christ's footprints. And all of a sudden there wasn't but one set. You ask God or ask Christ. Why did you abandon me? I didn't abandon you. When there's only one set of footprints, that's when I picked you up and carried you. He's always there to help. And he helped me decide between, or he helped me not make a bad decision on the wants versus needs. I actually tell that story a little bit different. I don't use footprints. Uh, back when I was trying to get sober and I realized I couldn't do it on my own. And when I say I needed some help, I'm not talking about AA, although I went to AA a lot. And I'm not talking about rehab, although I went there. There was somebody a whole lot more powerful, more powerful than me, AA, rehab, and everything else. That if he hadn't been walking right alongside of me, I'd still be a drunk. And what I had pointed out to me back then is he's always right there alongside of you. Always. Every step you take, he takes that step with you. And he's always got his hand out to help you. You do have to do a little bit, though. 
you have to reach out and take that hand. If you ignore the hand, he won't force it on you. That's free will. But anyway, I got hit in the face with want versus need. I wasn't smart enough to figure it out this time. God did it for me. He sent somebody into Walmart to buy that flat top. I hope they enjoy it. I hope they cook some wonderful food on it. And I hope one of these days when I've got a couple of extra bucks more than I've got right now, they'll put another one on sale. Or maybe I'll be able to pay full price and I'll get my flat top. But not that one. I really wanted that one, but obviously I didn't need it. So y'all have a fantastic day. I mean, just have the best day possible. And then tomorrow have a better one. And then the next day have a better one. And always remember, you know, the thing that's gonna make these days fantastic that I keep telling y'all to have is the same thing that I, other things that I always tell. You know what makes your days fantastic over and over and over that I tell you on these videos over and over and over to have fantastic days? You know what makes them fantastic? It's the other thing that I tell you on all these videos. Number one, the tomb was empty. And number two, he is alive. That's what makes these days fantastic. I'll see y'all in the next video. Right now, I'm going to drink some more coffee and go inside and find a sweet roll. I think we've got some in there.